what up though detroit so you already know the deal uh, you know just giving a shout out to petty tupac tv like comment subscribe you already know the deal we have to support our everybody's businesses and you know you already know how it goes we support each other you know what i'm saying make detroit win People ask me, who are the Detroit Highway men? It's a motorcycle club, one percenter. I believe the one percenter stands for, you know, just the one percent of the outlaws. It could have further, deeper definition. But I'll let them explain it to you one day. Growing up in an area of the highway men and, and knowing about them, they put a little spook in you. You know, if you mess with one of theirs, They'll see you. And they say they commit any violence. And they say they'll do anything to you. But they'll show up. One thing I didn't understand about it, why they don't accept blacks. And it is what it is. But I've run across them so many times. And I've talked to them. And they've always been polite, cordial. And shared that Southwest spirit, that outlaw spirit that we all have. The Highway Motorcycle Club. The Highway Men Motorcycle Club. Uh... Like I said, it's a 1% of motorcycle club. The club was formed in Detroit in 1954. The club has undergone a large number of scale police and FBI investigations, most notably in 1973, 87, and 2007. In the early 1970s, several members were convicted of bombings and raids of homes in the clubhouses of rival motorcycle clubs. The club is the largest in the Detroit area with over 400 members. In chapters in Alabama, Florida, Indiana, Kentucky, Missouri, Ohio, and Tennessee. Their insignia is a winged skeleton wearing a motorcycle cap and leather jacket, and their colors are black and silver. Their motto is, yeah, though we ride the highways in the shadow of death, we fear no evil, as we are the evilest motherfuckers on the highway. H-F-F-H. James Blake Miller. Uh... The Marlboro Marine is a member of the Kentucky Highway Men, many of whom, like Miller, are veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. The Highway Men are banned from the Detroit Federation of Motorcycle Clubs, which was created in the 1970s to resolve motorcycle gang turf wars. In 1995, the Highway Men were actually listed as an American Motorcyclist Association sanctioned club, a form of mainstream respectability which outlaw clubs would, over the course of the 1950s and 60s, come to reject as the very definition of outlaw and one percenter, just as much as the AMA rejected outlaw clubs from their midst. On May 5, 2007, the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, arrested 40 members and associates of the Detroit chapter of the Highway Men on a number of charges, including racketeering, murder for hire, assault, police corruption, cocaine trafficking, vehicle theft, uh, mortgage and insurance fraud. Now, I'm not saying that this is true. I'm just saying this is what evidence may suggest. 29 illegal firearms, including assault rifles, shotguns, and handguns, were also found when FBI agents raided homes in the chapter's uh, clubhouse. The investigation into the club lasted two years and involved wiretaps and two informants, one of whom was eventually murdered. The other was James Wallace III. High-ranking highway men and member um, Randell Lee McDaniel was arrested for running a chop shop in Lansing, Michigan on June 13, 2007. The investigation by the Monroe County Auto Theft Enforcement began in October 2006 and served several search warrants on properties owned by McDaniel. Seven owned properties. Boy, was getting some money. He was charged with conducting a criminal enterprise, operating a chop shop, motor vehicle theft, and possessing a controlled substance. Four police officers and a member of the highwaymen were indicted on March 12, 2008, by a federal grand jury in Detroit on charges stemming from the 2007 investigation into the drug trafficking. Highwaymen member Sean Donovan, who was already incarcerated or stolen on stolen property charges, was charged with possession with intent to strew distribute marijuana and uh, Vicodin. The four police members were also jailed for corruption. Also, rest in peace to L. Byrne, uh, Max, Big Max. Uh, he was the godfather. I couldn't find any photos of him. Um, 
I guess it was so long ago, you know, people weren't taking pictures like that or whatnot. But that's a little brief history of who the highway men are. Now, I believe this was a, a once former president, um, Mad Men, uh, or, or uh, Mad Anthony. Um, he was back in Detroit after doing a dime. That was in 2017. I can't find any information on where he is now, but he underwent uh, a form of an indictment. The Detroit biker boss, Mad Anthony Clark, um, came back home, the 59-year-old, one-time, excuse me, old-time highwayman, motorcycle club national president, was uh, recently released to a halfway house in the Motor City after a decade in prison. Um, he'll be free for good on May 16th. According to court records in DA documents, he suspected in an unsolved murder from almost 20 years ago. Of course they're going to say that. Clark was one of the featured defenders in a giant 2007 federal racketeering and drug indictment levied against Detroit Highway's hometown or homegrown biker gang and convicted at a 2010 trial. So I told you guys earlier, he had his original sentence reduced on appeal to Highway's men's national president from 2002 to 2005. Matt Anthony was busted in a previous racketeering case around the club activity in Michigan in the 1980s. Even though Clark was the club's national president for three years in the 2000s, he deferred to co-defendant and highway men godfather Leonard Big Daddy uh, Moore for all major decisions. Moore 69 always used a series of uh, front bosses in attempt to um, insulate himself from law enforcement scrutiny after Clark's presidency concluded. Man, after he stayed uh, on as Moore's top advisor, one witness at the um, summer 2010 trial testified Moore told him, I don't need little uh, the title presidency. I don't need the heat. I have the power and all, that's all that matters. He couldn't be more right. Big Daddy Moore is a schedule for release uh, from prison for another 11 years. Clark and uh, Moore were both implicated but never charged with the 1999 murder of an unnamed club member as part of the federal inquiry that landed them behind bars for racketeering and the Cardiff uh, trafficking a decade ago. In his November 2007 debriefing with the feds, Clark's protege in the club and former vice president, Danny Rocket Sanchez, admitted that he, Clark, and Moore killed another highwayman inside the highwayman's Detroit clubhouse and then set the clubhouse ablaze in the arson to eliminate the evidence. Rocket Sanchez and his brothers and fellow uh, turned co highwayman Nat Bolo Sanchez each testified against Clark and Moore at their trial. The murdered man's mother disrupted the trial in the middle of Rocket Sanchez's testimony by standing up in the back of the courtroom pointing to Sanchez and screaming, he killed my son, he killed my son. Clark and Sanchez and the Sanchez brothers both ran the cocaine distribution ring together. Per the 2007 indictment, Clark was involved in an attempted murder conspiracy in 2004 related to the highwayman's rivalry, rivalry with another local biker gang called the Black Pistons. I never heard of those guys, but I guess they do exist, no offense. The state's largest motorcycle club, the Highwaymen, were founded by Detroit L. Byrne, Big Max Burns back in 1954. The club maintains its chapters everywhere they've been doing it. The Highwaymen are known to do business with other major organized crime groups in the area, like the Italian Mafia and local Mexican street gangs such as the Latin Counts. According to court filings in 2007 case, the Highwaymen's liaison to the Detroit mob was Gary Jr. Ball and the club's contact with the Latin Counts was his then national president, Joseph Little Joe uh, Whiting, bought the club's unofficial narcotics boss, and Whiting, Big Daddy Moore's right-hand man, were both convicted and are currently guests of the federal corrections prison system. Little Joe Whiting got nailed for operating a stolen motorcycle ring once again. Uh, now, I told you guys, this is just documented stuff, and thank Lee, Lee Orborn for the story. Uh, that's where it come from. This is old. This is from 2017, okay? So you got to do the math on that. I'm just giving you something real, real quick. I didn't want to upload a lot of those guys' pictures because I know some of them got out of prison. And, like, I'm just being more conscious about what I do. I, I will black out some of their faces, which I'm going to start do doing that. But uh, whatever, you know, people look different from after doing a dime or uh, half a decade or uh, two decades. And I uh, don't want to put them on the hot list to get hit. More people notice them or whatever. So just try to be a little bit more conscious about that. 
Um, and like I said, these some guys just just they got my respect, man. And it take a lot to get my respect. I don't say that about too many people, but peace and blessings be upon y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this little video. Be